It was quite intense because she was just screaming. How am I going to manage this? Like, there's no one to help. A two-year-old girl has drowned at Bronte. They're doing CPR, two-year-old. Just lifeless and face down. Hello. If he sees his mother laying on the ground with a defib strapped to her, it's not something that. It's really hard. Lifeguards are conducting ordinary patrols when a frantic call comes in from volunteer lifesavers. Yeah, it's this is Lifeguard Tower, go ahead. Mate, they're calling resus. Down at the North Flag. Beardy's coming down with the defib. With it and Jake race from the south corner. Copy, mate. I'll call an ambulance. Kerbox and Jesse must cut through the middle of the beach. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, We're not trying to pressure, right? Sorry, mate. Get a pump. Yeah. Okay, pump. Box, you have a set, and then let me in when you had a, when you need a breather. Do we have any airways? Oral airways? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Lifeguards insert a plastic hose known as a Goodell to clear the woman's airway for oxygen. Just have a few of I've got a pulse. You've got a pulse? I've got a pulse. Yeah. yeah. I've got a pulse. Hang on. Got a pulse. Got a pulse. Still got a strong pulse. Yeah, yeah. 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 me too. Here we go. Yeah. I'm just going to slowly breathing. respirate her. Okay. That, that's all right. She's breathing. She's still breathing. She's breathing. She's still breathing. Yeah. We've, got the, we've got the defib on. One minute. Okay, do we have a history of what happened here? Anyone? So I ran here. I saw her. Uh, on the sand or out of the water? She was in the water. In the water. She was in the water. Okay, you know what? Did we, do we know how it happened or? No. All right. With no friends or family to verify what happened, lifeguards must take precautions in case the woman has damaged her spine. Yeah. Can you watch okay. your hand there? Okay, I'm going to take the. Re I'm taking off. Got it. Show her the neck. Dino tries to locate paramedics whose vehicles are parked next to the tower. Can't see the paramedics. Norm should be on the beach somewhere. I can see his Embo car. Got him here, Dino. Good work, Maddie. Come on, move! Paramedic Norm Spaulding helps train the lifeguards and is regarded as one of the best in the business. Okay, boys. Let the dogs see the rabbit. What have we got? Let's stop the conscious or unconscious? Yeah. Unconscious at the moment. Yeah, she's breathing out on her own? Yeah, she's breathing out on her own. Good boys. Well done. Good work. Good work. If the woman has suffered a spinal injury, it's vital she is kept immobilised. Can you open your eyes for me? But then... She vomits. Over on the side. Head three, two, one. Can you get me a glove, someone? Yeah, we're, we're. Airways always takes priority for us because she'd swallowed so much water, we knew it was going to come back out. Well, you certainly stimulated the airway. That's great. While she's over on the side, bring your board over and lay it along her back. As lifeguards stabilise the woman on the spinal board, she regains consciousness. Nah. On your call with it. Ready? On you happy way? to roll? Three, two, one. Let's roll. Uh, Just relax. Just relax, boys. Just, Just relax. When you've got a lady like that, unconscious and not responding, one of us who's not sort of hands-on is, is looking for family, looking for friends. Everything sort of changed when we found out she was actually down here with her son. A member of the public identifies a boy looking for his mother. The kid over there Which one? in the green shorts, okay. he's got Down syndrome, he's, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't know that it's his mom there. Well, not essential. I've got the ladies and the son's clothing. He actually had Down syndrome and he had no idea what was going on or where his mum was. Um, and I've got a number, I'm just going to call. Will she answer? Maybe? No? We'll try anyway. Yeah, we'll try. The boy's mother is in a critical condition. Jake decides not to tell him what has happened. It's really hard because if he sees his mother laying on the ground with a defib strapped to her, it's not something that anyone would want to see. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. No answer. You're going to go with the ambulance? And you're going to go with your mum to the, to the hospital? 
Okay, and then and they'll take after you. So we'll, we'll pack up all your stuff. Yeah, he was 23 years old and he was down here with his mother. They were Thai Australian. They lived in Western Sydney and they just, I think they caught the train down. The ambulance is coming and you'll go for a ride in the ambulance, okay? With your mum. Let's get some hands on. Whoever's on the head, stay on the head. Yeah, you do nothing head. else, you're doing the head. Yeah. On the count of three. Three, three. Up, up. 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 Just stay nice and still for us. Okay, guys, I've got the head. I'm going to take control. And Moving a patient off the beach, again, spinal care comes into it because you've got a bumpy surface to get across. Slow as. Slow as. Let's go. We'll need you Ready? to help. There you go, Jess. You need as many hands as you can on deck, and we're driving super slow. Worst case, they can go back unconscious, you know, stop breathing, lose their pulse, and we've got to start all over again. Quite intense because she was just screaming. Ah! Oh, so take over the hand, we're gonna roll the board, okay? Yeah. Two, three, roll. Look at the board. Two, three, back. Keep breathing. That's it. A few local people that sort of jerried onto what was going on and they offered us a bit of help. Oh, kisses. Mm. <laughs> she had a couple of little dogs and, and we were using them as a, as a just sort of a distraction. Oh, Kiss, he's very soft, isn't he? Because he was still asking about his mum. OK, we're going to go for Ron the Edwards now. Right, mum's just a little bit sick, so they're going to go check her out at the hospital. Okay. To see him concerned for his mum and not knowing what was going on, that's heartbreaking when you see that. You know, you never forget about your resources. And I don't know, I've got kids and, and I've seen kids down here lose their parents and it's devastating. And when you see someone with their kid, it makes it, it brings it home. You know, a lot of the boys have got kids and it always sort of rams at home just how valuable life is. We later found out that she actually had an aneurysm and we also realised that it wasn't a spinal injury. Okay. You know, obviously our... Uh, Thoughts and prayers go out for her and her family and hope she makes a full recovery. Whitey just washed up on Flat Rock right in front of my eyes. There's nothing more that we could have done. We had a weather forecast that showed that we were going to get an ex-tropical cyclone moved down the coast, combined with some nice weather. A beautiful sunny day with eight foot surf. It's really dangerous. On an ordinary day, this is a common place for teenagers to meet. In Big Swell, Ben Buckler is no place for playing around. It can lull you into this false sense of security. You get these big sets coming through, and in between, there's not a lot of wave, and all of a sudden, what looks like a freak wave will come, and that's basically what happened on Saturday. Oh, my God, oh my God. We got a call on the phone saying that there was an unconscious patient in the water off the back of Ben Buckler. Went to the boat ramp and I immediately saw a lady who had cuts all over her legs. I basically asked her, can you show me where you went swimming or can you show me where you were? As we went to start walking to um, go and pinpoint this area, a body just washed up on flat rock right in front of my eyes. It's very confronting to know that you're about to jump in the water and you're looking for a body and there's very good chance that you're going to find him. Yeah, I've got the waves washing in my face and I decide to go down. This is where I'm confronted with the gentleman who's, who's stuck on the rocks. I try and grab him, but I, I can't seem to free him. And I have to yell out to Chapo, you need to give me a hand, I can't, I can't grab him. Me and Chapo are able to free the gentleman. And there's a lot of current pulling against us and there's so many things that w are working against you. We're fighting to try and pull basically a dead weight up on the back of... A, a rocking jet ski was, was really hard. Jake was able to manoeuvre that jet ski perfectly to give us the best opportunity of, of getting this gentleman up the boat ramp safely and safely for ourselves. 
Jake's driving was sensational. And then another legend from nowhere, just a bystander, came and helped me and Beardy. And me and Beardy had the arms and he had the legs and like we couldn't have done it without him. It's now been over 20 minutes since the man was swept into the sea. We have to start CPR and we're not going to stop until the paramedics come and tell us not to. You know, once they worked out where we were, they were very quickly to take over and give this guy every opportunity. And they did everything. They tried really hard in a really difficult situation to, to basically bring this guy back. After 10 minutes of CPR, paramedics pronounced the man dead. This is just a really tragic accident. Unfortunately, this couple had ventured out in an area that they were unfamiliar with. You know, their intention wasn't to come down to Bondi with any risky behaviour. They were just not informed about the power of the ocean. It's, for me, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to be involved in, in that situation and actually see the gentleman pass away, really, and in front of his wife. There's nothing more that we could have done. This particular incident, the odds were just against us, the gentlemen, but operationally, I couldn't be more proud of our team. She lost that beautiful little girl. She'd know what I'm talking about. Really? I'm watching a father and his daughter in the foreground, and then all of a sudden I see this young girl. She's gonna go under, and if she goes under and disappears into that deep hole, Another 30 seconds or another 40 seconds underwater, it's, it's like you find her or she's gone. Get the board, get in the water, hope you don't get s slowed up by waves coming in, and then sprint to the patient. close to all the 30 seconds to get to her. Yeah, she was definitely uh, at a point, a serious point by the time I made contact with her. Right. Right. Yeah, I'll take you in safely, OK? You know, we rescue thousands of adults a year, um, but we might only do a handful of kids, little kids, you know, and uh, every time one of the boys does a rescue of a kid, it's a big deal. My daughter nearly drowned then. Yeah. Okay, you need to go to the red and yellow flags. Yeah. Watch your back. Thank you. Okay. Uh, especially with young kids like that, because I lost my son. I, I know that feeling. Sorry, guys. My boy was trapped in the birth canal and had complications which cut the oxygen off for 10 minutes, but the result was a week later that he died. Whenever I do a rescue of a young child, that comes to the surface. She lost that beautiful little girl. She'd know what I'm talking about. You know? I'm seeing my brother and I recognized it with surgery. Because I'll do it. Oh my god, never follow me, okay? Jeffy, never follow me, me in seas. I might get into danger. And you're smaller and weaker swimmer than me, so you can't always follow me. Okay. This is going to be the worst thing I've ever seen. It's a lifeguard. Continue for one minute thirty. I remember coming over to the last wave, and what I saw next just, you know, absolutely shocked me to the core. The woman is unconscious and not breathing. Singlets must let the team know. The situation is critical. Instead of three pumps, the first thing you gotta do is, is get the deep fifth. The man and the woman are from the same family. Of course, I wanted to help Singer. He was asking for help, but I couldn't leave this guy that was clearly about to drown, so I had to paddle that guy in and then go help again. Singlets are screaming at me to come over and help him. This lady's unconscious. And then I heard on the megaphone... Oh, there's one out to the left here as well. 
further out. The situation has become much worse. Had to paddle over the crest of one or two more little waves and then I just saw a person face down, just lifeless and face down. I've seen some crazy things in my 19 years of, of service and, mate, that one was just, just unbelievable. Chapo's not even working, Chapo's in there. Where we were, there was just constant little waves that just kept chipping away, like just making it harder and harder and harder. I just went straight to Corey, because he needed help. Singlets is left with no assistance. You know, I just felt like, how am I going to manage this? Like, there's no one to help. It's been three minutes since the pair were found face down. The human brain cannot survive without oxygen for much longer than six minutes. If I lose my board... Come on, Lake. Talk to me. Hello. Worst possible scenario. Hello. Because I'm going to be in the water with a dead patient. Hello, hello. Come on, come. I just thought to myself, I'm going to have to draw on every little bit of skill Every little bit of training Lady, hello. to get this woman in because there is really no other option. Anyone who's tried to pick up an unconscious patient is just pretty much sometimes impossible on your own. And you know, for the job he did, it was just incredible. Pick up. Sideways, sideways, use the drone. This way, this way. Yeah. Right. Four and a half minutes after Oddbjorg was first found, Singlets begins the vital compressions, which will circulate oxygen from her bloodstream through to her brain. Don't worry about that. Keep coming. Keep coming. sister watches on. No shot. They're out there, mate. They're still out there. Even with, like, three or four other guys trying to push the board when a wave came, the, the wave just wouldn't take us. Almost six minutes have lapsed since Corey first reached Johnny. Five surfers have joined three lifeguards in the fight against the rig. Somehow he came off the board again. It just drove me insane that I couldn't get him in. Lifeguards listen to the defibrillator. Continue for 15 but Oddbjerg's heart rhythm is in flatline and she can't be shocked. Stop CPR. Stop now. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. I remember looking around and went, oh no. This is going to be the worst thing I've ever seen. It's a lifeguard. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, get that back in. The thing that was going through my brain more than anything was like, this person's. Friends or family are going to be on the beach watching this whole thing. Continue for one minute thirty. This is the worst crisis the service has faced in decades. No matter how long they've been unconscious for, you know you you're not going to give up. Get the bearing. Get tilt the head, mate. Held back. Head tilt. That's yeah. it. Continue. Good, good compression box. They get there. They get there. Boys, have I got anyone to come up here and give the ambos a lift down? Oh, take the buggy. Now, please. I just need you to come over. Yes. Yeah. Hey, jump in, jump in. Fifteen minutes after the pair were found face down. How many patients you got? Two. The prospect of successful resuscitation is becoming less likely by the second. There's one patient, there's one patient. We've got no pulse, no breathing in the water for maybe five, nine five minutes. But we've gone with the shocks and all that. We haven't had a shock, we haven't had a mate The whole time, I just, I wanted to see nothing but see him start coughing or, or blink. Johnny is also fitted with a defibrillator in the hope his heart can be restarted. But 
No shockable rhythm is present. Back to CPR, yeah. bring, bring, please, thank you. Okay. The hope is that we generate a, a shockable rhythm, we get it off flat line, and that can help him come back to life. Doing well, guys. 30 metres away, paramedics fit an ECG machine to Odbjerg, hoping to identify electrical activity in her heart. And then, out of nowhere, he said, oh, hey, boys, I think I'm getting a, a faint electrical activity there. Next minute, you know, we heard, we've got activity, there's a pulse come back. And I looked at Singless, was like, oh, my God, like, we've got it back. Absolutely incredible. One of the paramedics told me that there's a 0.01% chance that someone will survive something like this, and there it was right in front of us. It was just this huge relief and singles and I were like, thank God. But, you know, that, that didn't help things as well because then the boys, unfortunately, across from us were like, you know, had their heads down. With their sister revived, family members turned to their brother-in-law. But after 30 minutes of CPR, paramedics call an end to the resuscitation. We're just like, how? Why can't we get this guy back? Like, you know, over the years we've had so many successful sort of resuscitations, and it's surreal having someone die at your hands. It's not what many people are used to dealing with. Yeah, poor Jeffro, he was in the tower and would have hit him hard as well. It's, it's harder to be in the tower when resources are going on because you feel helpless, but you're playing such an important role. Yeah, when Singlet started paddling, it just got worse and worse. It's our one job down here to, to get everyone home safe and out of the water. And, you know, obviously sometimes we do our best and it's not good enough, but it hurts a lot. Now breathing on her own, Odbjerg is placed into an induced coma and prepared for transportation to hospital. I'll come with you as well, all right? It's going to be OK. So she's showing really good signs, all right? So just relax, OK? It's going to be all right. Okay. I know, it's okay. One, we'll just worry about one person at a time, okay? Thank you. Thank you. It may be days before Odbjerg's condition is fully known. You never have that you know, feeling of relief until you finally get the all clear and, you know, you're just praying, you know, for days that you're going to get that. I was just sitting in the tower watching the water and we got a knock at the door and she said, ah, uh, hi, uh, you rescued my sister. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, and I was just, she was looking at me and I, I just said, how, how is she? And she's like, this is her. <laughs> and the lady just stood there and like, we just looked at each other for, I felt like for like 20 seconds, we just, I just looked at her. I was like, this can't be real. Like, you should be dead. We, as soon as we saw each other, we just had this huge hug for about a minute and uh, there were tears. For me to see her with life in her body and life in her eyes, it was incredible. So this is from the sister, actually. Dear Trent, thank you again for saving my sister from drowning on Bondi Beach. The hard work you and your fellow lifeguards did for both Odbjörg and our brother-in-law, Johnny, meant the world to us. I had the feeling of being on, in a roller coaster between deep sorrow and extreme happiness. Going home together with Odbjörg, who shows no signs of injury at all, is the best gift ever. I would like you to know and also pass on to your fellow lifeguards the 
All of us who are present at Bondi are so grateful for your knowledge, capacity, endurance, and hard work regarding both Johnny and my sister. Our sister who lost her husband asked me to thank you for trying as hard as you did to save Johnny's life. His coffin will come to Norway in a few days. So we are going to gather for his funeral. Please pass on our thanks to everybody involved. A two-year-old girl has drowned at Bronte. They're doing CPR, two-year-old. 10 a.m. Bronte Beach, just south of Bondi. Freelance photographer Fergus Wolveridge shoots images of Australian beach life. Suddenly, the serenity is shattered. The reporter I was with um, was called me back and I came running back down. She's like, oh, something's going on, you know, in the water. There's a little blob, like, swimming out. And then, so I turned around and everyone was sort of looking and I said, any strong swimmers, go. I've noticed all the other boys running around like crazy. And so something bad had happened. And I heard the mum screaming, um, Noah, Noah. It was until I grabbed my board and, and I just seen a, just a tiny little body uh, just behind the breakers. It turned out to be a little girl. Just as I saw her, she was sh trying, still, still going for it, up and down, um, head bobbing under the water. But uh, not long after that, she just sort of flattened out and was underwater. And she was just like, five or six metres from me underwater, it's you know, heavy. By the time I got to her, she was blue, not breathing. The distraught mother is on the shore. Mouse performs CPR on the girl's tiny body. Yeah, I gave her two, Some mouth to mouth. two breaths. She just went from being blue and doing nothing to a little a little cough and a little like, eye flicker and then she started crying and then I Sammy started crying and then we just had like a little hug and then started and then we just had to then we had to get her in. Meanwhile, the girl's father is also rescued. He was close to drowning himself. Great life. Thank you so much. Awake? She awake? Awake? Yeah, yeah. keep yeah. make sure keep she's awake. Keep her awake, okay? okay. Sure. Yeah, okay, Let, let's keep walking up to the castle. Come in there. Come in there. Uh -huh. Where's your, where's your husband? Because uh, someone should be probably looking at him because he's taking some yeah. water too. The tiny girl's name is Noah Kim. Her family are on holidays from Korea. Father June was underwater when he was rescued. Your daughter should be OK, OK? So, but you need to make sure someone looks at you and listens to your chest. How long was she unconscious? Mate, oh, uh, who knows? You know, maybe... Three to three minutes. That was insane. I'm paddling out. I can see her body in the water, just her body, and I got hit by a wave, lost my board, and she's like five metres from me. Mate, and, and then H man just threw me his board, and these, I was just yelling at these surfers. And then when, once, and once we turned with, when she came good and she vomited and that, we knew she was okay. I turned around, and this the other surfers, the local Bronny guys, just had this other guy just holding him up. He was just like out as well, and I was just thinking, well, what's going on here? You know. It's Noah will spend two days in intensive care at Sydney Children's Hospital. This is how quick this stuff happens, you know, I mean, it's, you can't tell people enough that, you know, you lose your feet and you're gone within seconds, you know. It's home with me because I've got a two-year-old, so, you know, it's just that thought of not being able to get her back. It's... These guys did an amazing job. Uh, that definitely defies odds being a lifeguard. Just watching Mouse resus a two-year-old child. Unbelievable. I just like Bobby here to 